Alright guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com and with my buddy, Clint. Hey, Clint. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year, guys. Clint is one of my good friends. He's also, and, and, and for all the trolls out there, Clint is not a financial advisor. He is not <laughs> licensed at all. So, no, no, please do not take any advice. Actually, I'm not a financial advisor. So don't take advice from any of us. Neither of us. I think there's a problem um, with... Like, some of you guys think, like, we're trying to give you advice and force it down your throats to invest. Clint's talked about ICE and CE, uh, not ICE drugs, but magic, <laughs> ICE. Yeah, just because I like it. That's the kind of stuff that I like. I enjoy ICE, so I'm going to talk about it. It has nothing to do with, like, Yeah, we're not, I'm not trying to convince anybody <laughs> or nothing. Yeah, if you, it's, it's, too, it's, your, it's your jobs as magic investors to make your decisions. So I'm going to, uh, this question actually came from Facebook. It was actually a very interesting topic. Clint and I will answer it kind of in our way. What is Magic the Gathering a leading indicator of the U.S. economy? No. U.S. economy. No. Now, we could go for a worldwide economy. Well, I relegate, relegate Clint says no. Is there okay? Fine. Explain why no, but maybe is there any sort of hint? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So so give us a give us some advice here. So I mean, I think that certainly Magic the Gathering is going to correlate heavily with U.S. markets, uh, and there's a lot of reasons for that. U.S. mark right uh, when the Federal Reserve raised interest rates, there's less cash around, so. The price of everything drops, so the price of magic card drops. Like it's all tied together in one neat bundle, right? Everything kind of moves together. A rising tide rises all ships. A lowering tide lowers all ships. Magic is really interesting to me, like I was telling you on the phone earlier, in that uh, a lot of things like movie sales, like ticket sales, or fast food sales, or things like that, they don't really indicate across the entire. Uh, income spectrum, financial spectrum, however you want to say that. Whereas magic cards, there's all the way up to BGS 10 Lotus, all the way down to standard commons, bulk crap, right? There's all the way up and down. And so magic has a unique place in the market. And also I believe that magic cards are in general, some of the last thing that people sell and some of the first things that people buy mostly. There's certainly a lot of people out there who are just investors and those investors are going to be the people who sell first, right? There's, if you're just an investor, when the market goes down, the people who start bailing first are going to be the investor types. And that's smart of them. That's what they should do. But, uh, I would, I would guess that 80% of all magic cards are held by people who that's the last thing. That yes, sell. everybody. Not a total, total guess. not a statistic. You should be like banking to the bank. <laughs> no, but this is good because I think, okay, so this is a great question. My, this is good. I think what, first off, we have to define something here. An economic economy, when you talk about leading indicator, you're talking more about like, like this is what I actually, the analogy I thought of on the car right here. It's like FedEx. Sure. To me, FedEx, you guys know what FedEx is, shipping like UPS, FedEx, UPS. To me, the shipping industry yeah. is more of an indicator than any of the industries out there like retail or advertising or uh, raw goods or, you know, uh, you know, real estate, whatever. The reason right. why is because shipping involves all the industries. Everybody has to ship. Right. Those. And then, you know, Clint is in the business of glass materials. He does shipping for his business. Business, so he sees a lot of that. But if the if the industry if, if his business declines, it's just his industry. Does that make sense? Whereas if FedEx business declines, oh, it's declining from all across, all, across. all industries. So let's define something. FedEx has Express, which is air, ground. They have freight. Uh, they have international. Uh, you know, you, you know, they have some ocean networks. Let's be clear. If they start seeing declines in international export and import type of things, you see difficulties in the worldwide economy. Yeah. Because if other countries don't want the product or samples or whatever the hell they're buying, and this affects retail because retail is 
big on uh, shipping, you know, back and forth. Uh, domestic, too. If you see more people doing ground, uh, that's more online shipping that I've noticed. If it's express, fast, you know, fast and stuff, you're talking about more, maybe uh, more sensitive material, more information. I'm not saying that just because it's ground means it's necessarily, that's only online customers. Yeah. But I find that ground tends to be people that want to just buy online because it's cheaper. Yeah. You know, it's less expensive. Ground is a consumer thing. Right. Ground and is a consumer Amazon thing. uses a two-day UPS or two-day FedEx. One and they the, have their own stuff. Yeah. Now. Yeah, which is really good. Right. So, so do you see where I'm going with this? I think that with Magic, and this is a good question because Magic cleanse right. You have the BGS 10 Lotuses. Obviously, I've done very many, but the high end Alpha Lotuses, and you have lower end like Ultimate Masters, the new standard. Yeah. That recur- touches everything. You know, you have the MTG Arena, which touches the MTGO. So you have a wide spectrum, but where I, th- I think, so maybe answer the question as if, let's, let's play devil's advocate. Let's say it's sure. not true. Let's say it's not truly the true leading indicator. If but what what air? Team. But where where yeah, is it yeah. that that could be signaling like there's a recession or something? Right. Going if there's on? so, in general, most things are some part true. And if I was going to say magic is a leading indicator in this instance, it would be in that a lot of people who play magic have high jobs, right? Or I not. I would say that a lot of the money that's in Magic, there's a lot of tech jobs and things like that. There's a lot of people who play Magic who are low income earners, but they don't drive the Magic market the way that the higher income earners do, obviously. Mm-hmm. And like I said before, a lot of well, it depends nerds, on what kind of market you're talking about because I think some, I think the question, I think this person was asked a question in the old school group. Sure. So let's. I think there's a problem here. The, the is that if we're depend- just. Ta- I didn't realize he was just talking about old. School well, stuff. see, that's the thing is there's. You're right. There's two yeah. different kinds of markets. There's well, there's several kinds of markets. It's all the whole. One stuff is like so. I think maybe he's just saying magic in general. Sure. So let's just break that down. Like so, the standard, like you said, who high school barely getting in, maybe work mm-hmm. at the subways. Those All guys, experience. those guys, yeah, those guys are starting at the beginning, the standard mm-hmm. level. Uh, type of cards does that yeah. question is does that really affect the yeah. market I, so is that an indicator is if, that an indicator if there are a lot of because it's we're talking about jobs like i said i believe that there is a large portion of the magic community who magic is the first thing that they turn to with disposable income and so magic across the scale and including at lower income levels is going to be a leading indicator of higher wages and more disposable income, which is an indicator that the, the market is in general getting better. And Are so, you saying that that's the standard sets, like Ravnica, Allegiance, whatever the new sets, is that the majority of those like lower end jobs? No, I would say that it's, it's, it's across the whole spectrum, right? It's across the whole spectrum. Like even hmm. people like Edwin the Magic Engineer, he get moves, he gets a new job, he spends more money on magic sure. cards, right? And so across that whole spectrum, you're going to see, I believe that you could call magic a leading indicator in that it's kind of tied into the disposable income of basically tech jobs. Tech jobs hmm. with disposable income, magic prices go up. And so there's things like that that I believe that you could find if the magic card market is going up could possibly be a leading indicator that the general economy is doing well and is going to be doing better in the near future. My argument with, and that's good. My argument is that I don't think magic's a good indicator because it is um, what I call in the category of like feel good, like alcohol. So Mm -hmm. let me explain. What happened was in the recession back in 2000, 2008, Anheuser-Busch, all the alcoholic companies, their stocks and stuff, if you look at it carefully, they went down, but they didn't really go down that much because they are tend to be dividend stocks. They tend to have uh, people still want to drink. Yeah. They still want to feel good. Certain stocks didn't just tank to the ground, like, like let's say, GE or Bank of America. Yeah. It's more. It was more about those type of things are kind of last resort type of things. 
Right? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. last you cut, resort. You cut your alcohol budget last. Yeah. <laughs> you, I, I feel you cut like, your magic budget last. I feel like you cut your gaming budget really last because it's kind of like that last thing. Like, hey, this is what I got. You know. Mm-hmm. Now I agree. Some of you that's guys might all dis- devil's advocate. Yeah. That's all devil's advocate. Some of you guys might disagree and be like, hey, think fine. Well, I'm an old school player and I have kids. And if I had to sell my cards and I had thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, I had to sell my stuff. Absolutely. You would probably sell it. But I'm saying that from an average magic consumer, mm-hmm. from like buying like standard and all the because that's a big number. Buying standard, MTG oh, Arena, stuff like that. Those that disposable income from like I'd probably say college to like beginning first job. That job standpoint, if the economy tanks, I think it could be an indicator of, you know, like like lack of luxury income spend, mm-hmm. and that that could lower the Hasbro sales, Wizard of the Coast sales, and cause yeah. and, and kind of a, a spark. Be like, wait a second, the market's going down. Yeah. Right now, here's the big difference with with and Clint could elaborate on this too, is that. I think magic is not a leading indicator because it's different than typical luxury buying. For example, if I'm going to Nordstrom's or I'm going to a salon or I'm going to like go to GM, right, buy a car, that's different than Magic the Gathering. The reason why is because it is an investable product. You're buying old school cars or Power Nine and Dual Lands. When you buy those hand, those purses or underwear or you know, like yeah, I'm gonna get less haircuts. No, I'm gonna buy less cars, right? I'm gonna buy less luxury products magic's a little different because you're talking about a secondary market where there's actual value to grow to have with those products yeah. it's not like the true luxury where it's like mm-hmm. okay i don't need to buy a fancy fancier car i yes i agree that magic is a luxury product but there's an investability side unlike yeah. victoria's secret or computers and apple you don't need to have those things and there's no value in those things Correct. at yeah. all. So talk to people about that. Like, why is magic so unique as an investable product? And how how does that become an indicator? Like, let's say the how economy is how unique and how does it become a leading indicator? Let's say the economy tanks, and let's say those magic starts sparking a sell-off in you know low uh, just just investable product side. Sure. Is that an indicator that the economy is going bad? I mean, so. When you phrase the question that way, it kind of has to be. But it, how is magic unique? And, and you, you and Rudy have touched on this a lot. And it's, I, the reason why I justify buying the magic cards that I buy is because I have many times in the past bought a modern deck and then, you know, four, six, eight months down the road, you get strapped for cash a month and you can sell a modern deck. You can't do that like you said with, you know, Victoria's Secret spend or you bought a new drone for Christmas or or things like that. There's not that redeemability. Not even close. Not even close. Yeah. Nothing close. And if you're if you're careful about it and smart about it and diligent about it, magic cards are very good at growth. They are very good at growth. We're in a little bit of a downturn right now, but like I said before, I tell you could really is that my international edition collection continues to go up in value it hasn't gone down in value i don't know where you guys are getting these down in value like this crash thing but well but the set, also well the sets have gone the down. sets have gone sure. down the sets have yeah. gone down but i like i've always said commons and uncommons you know international edition giant growth is five dollars well, doesn't well, make any sense to me well why have the sets <laughs> gone down then i mean side note why on the international There's, edition? there was a a spike there was a spike where and this is actually something that leads back into our conversation. Like, how is magic a leading indicator? How is it not a leading indicator? And with magic investing, the analogy that I would use is it'd be like trying to predict the weather with a weather sock, right? It's such mm-hmm. a small thing that can be turned in so many different directions for so many different reasons. Trying to use it as a leading indicator would be a bad idea because old school cards, international edition cards spiked because of old school interest. Because they started to become legal in a playable format, old school. And all of the old school cards, they just popped out of nowhere. And that had nothing to do with any economic indicators really at all. The reason why they popped up so much could be linked to the fact that the economy was doing very, very well at the time. There was a lot of money floating around. But in the end, the reason why that whole set of cards, international edition cards, all went up 
when and how they did was mostly because of old school. And those sorts of things happen all the time in the Magic Mark. Cards get banned, cards get reprinted. Uh, get, some are more useful than others. They win tournaments. They win tournaments. Or some are more collectible. Like there might be a buyout of a certain picture. There might be a like. buyout. Yeah. Or, there's so many reasons that Windsock could get yeah. turned so many different directions. And, and that has nothing to do with the economy. That has nothing, nothing to, to do, do with, with the economy. economy. So we talk about the economy. It's about jobs, interest rates, all that fagazi yeah. crap that are in like in our marketplace for stocks mm-hmm. and real estate. That has. We're not talking anything about. The economics yeah. of the world. We're not talking about anything about the economics yeah. of the it's world. It's more about the collectible economy, and mm-hmm. it's individualized based on what the collector loves and plays. Yeah. And so, if the only thing I can think of as indicator wise is more like the question, I think the better question is will the collector, the collector mind, doesn't matter if it's comics, sports cards, based, whatever. And I actually think sports cards are more domestic based. The international base like Magic the Gathering. So I think all the only thing sports cards is just like Magic. I think Magic is better than sports sports cards because it's playable old school because, old because school there's, more international, there's more international there's uh, more international play. But also the international. My feel is that the better question is in collectible market is will these collectors sell in times of desperation? Will collectors liquidate yeah, their collection? So Across their demographic, you know, of like types of, you know, you could say the, the, the whale collectors. You have the BGS ten high end, quad plus plus alpha lotuses, excuse me. Or you have the people in the mid mid tier, right? You have the people that are revised dual lands legacy. You have the people in the standards buying, you know, the you know, ultimate masters. You have people below that even, right? Are they going to liquidate at times of need, and is it going to happen? Because at a certain yeah. point, even if the cards go down, I've actually heard this saying from many people, and you guys have heard this too. If the economy tanks, if it goes, let's say your collection was $30,000, $20,000, and let's say it goes down to $2,000, ask yourselves, have you heard this before? No, Clint, I'm not going to sell my collection because I just enjoy playing with the damn cards. And if, they, and if they went down, I just don't care. I, I was like, I, they're too nostalgic. If is my, that true? Yeah. If my well, so there, there's a lot there. So if my collection went from my collection right now is about twenty thousand dollars, and if it went down to two thousand dollars, I'm not selling. I'm buying. Ninety <laughs> percent. You already said he's I'm not buying. Selling, I'm buying. He's if, buying. If why would you buy? Because let's say let's say so you know I picked up some international edition lightning bolts for like yeah. sixty bucks, and you were saying a ten percent. Decline to ten percent, ninety percent, ninety percent. I'm picking up yeah. lightning, ninety percent lightning bolts for six bucks, six bucks all day long. He would sell. He would sell long. his body. I would sell. <laughs> no, you would. You would. No, you would. I would get a job as a bikini barista. You would find. <laughs> I'd get a job. I'm gonna put that as a title. Clint, Clint gets a job for, for, inter, for international <laughs> like No, but I, I'm, I'm fucking. Ser- I am dead fucking serious. If, 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 if at a certain price point mm-hmm. for collectibles, this is where it's different. People would just buy, buy them all. all. Rudy would buy them all. I would buy them all. It, that's what I'm saying is, certain, like if, 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 if a Black Lotus, an unlimited Black Lotus, somehow went to 200 bucks, I mean, I would literally work tw- I would literally work 24 hours a day to buy as many as I can yeah. to get even more money if I At had to. At that point, I just want a wall of them. Right? I, just At that wall- point, I just want a wall and of then, them. And then the stores. supply ends up hitting you in the face and be like, no, 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 no. It can't be at 200 bucks forever yeah. because eventually people will just buy them all. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and then the collectors and investors would inv- with, own them all. Yeah, with the international edition, I've seen it. Like I said, I haven't put – I'm not a big investor, but yeah. I have felt my own actions in the international edition market right. are small enough. But, like, but then – so there's also another question is if the price – say the price has dropped 30%. If the price has dropped 30% and – I was in a tough financial position. Smaller percentage. A like smaller a normal, percentage. Normal, yeah. I'm going to take some profits off the table because yeah. I have some profits in my, my collection. Yeah. I'm going to take some profits off the table. I do that. I and do that's that. what Clint did, actually. I do that regularly. He sold some, uh, he sold some cards mm-hmm. for some extra cash, took some profits off the table. Not necessarily thinking there's going to be a down down turn. turn. It's just time to take some profits. Yeah. Why right? not? It's there, healthy. The cards I had sitting on yeah. the side. And it's, you know, it's healthy to do that. It's healthy to take some yes. profits on the table. Please, off the table please take your profit. profits. That's fine. Take some profits. Like, and, and, you know, the yeah. profit, it is kind of in a decline. And I sold about, 
I sold between you and I buy listed stuff, stuff to AVU Games. I sold about eight percent of my collection. Wow! And it was non collectors, non international, no international edition stuff. Some collectors edition stuff and mostly round corner garbage. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So explain what you buy listed, uh, the round corner garbage, and also why are you buy listing collector's edition, not international edition? It's the prices are still not not where they should be, right? Je for what? For international edition and collector's edition, the prices haven't quite yet equalized in a lot of very odd places, and I think that's an indicator of about what's going to happen next. The International Edition Dual Lands are almost the same price as the Collector's Edition Dual Lands, and that shouldn't be the case. And I think it's because we're pushing up against the ceiling there. There's resistance. The price of International Edition and Collector's Edition Duals are butting right up against the price of Revised Duals right now, and I think that once there's some separation there, we could see higher prices. I still think that you know International Edition giant growth for five dollars is just insane because the commons still haven't caught up yet right like again you know there's five thousand this is a shot at this is a shot at edwin here there's five thousand <laughs> international edition giant growths and there's twenty thousand shaharazads there's twenty thousand shaharazads and there's five inter five thousand international edition giant growths and you can pick up an international edition giant growth for five bucks. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but you're saying that it's Charizard and okay, fine. So you're basing this based on rarity, somewhat playability, but giant obviously Charizard yeah. is Arabian Nights, which makes it more of a mystique. To yeah, characters. no. So, so the other thing that I really enjoy is sort of uh, contrarian investing, right? I not to the uh, the normal path. Yeah, yeah, against the normal path. That's the yeah. way I do everything That's what Rudy that I do. Too. That's Rudy's. the way I do everything I do. Yeah. We just had a yeah. conversation about why I'm never going to finish my bachelor's degree, even though I'm really close. And it's just because I don't want to. I don't want that on my record. Non-conformist <laughs> here, guys. Non-conformist. Non so I like international edition. I like that it's not Watsy legal. I like yeah. that there's the opportunity for it to become Watsy legal, which right. is, could... You know, there's no other magic cards that were printed in the first year of printing... That are if you look at the list of rarities, it's like Alpha Rare, Beta Rare, right. Alpha Uncommon, International Edition, Giant Growth. <laughs> All right, like three. All right, let's wrap this part up. So, yeah. uh, so, la so back to the question. I want to hear from you guys. The leading indicator is Match the Gathering a leading indicator? Let's just cut off the leading. Is it an indicator at any level of the U.S. economy, micro, macro, whatever the worldwide economy? What are your thoughts in the comments below? Clint and I both think that it's not, not really. but there is. It's I tied together. It's I understand together. there's something tied together, but it's not the. It's not like I put on one of my comments. It's not even like a pebble in the pond, right? Yeah. It, it's it's it, it's a. I, I understand why you're asking the question because there is symmetricness to it. Mm -hmm. It seems like there is like a parallel to oh yeah. this is going up so that means oh, uh, this spend's going up. oh the stock market went down that's why we're seeing all the buy list prices go down yeah, it yeah. seems it seems like a cool well, and it's good it's good to have yeah. those sorts of thought experiments yeah. that's a very travis woo like we want to yeah. think about it you want to yeah. think about it even though it probably isn't the case it's a good idea to think about stuff like that sometimes. it is it and is. that commenter inspired this video and so now here yeah. we are talking about it thinking about and it and so for actually, all you talk. trolls out there we're not saying it is <laughs> Or it isn't. It's our opinions. Read the damn disclaimer. They're all my videos. I am. I, yeah. I got it from Jim Kramer from CNBC. We are not financial, not financial advisors, advisor. and it doesn't matter if we were or not. You make your own decision. Your adults make your own damn decision. Happy New Year, Happy New Clint. Year. Happy New Year. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Well, another video coming soon. That's all I got. <laughs>